We are joined now by the L.A. Chargers GM. His name is Tom Telesco. Tom Teakin, Tierney, how you doing today, buddy? What's happening? I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Uh, talk a little Chargers football. Talk a little bit about the move, the unique stadium setup. Um, the transition is still, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, still going on. Where are you guys at with that? Almost done? Are you, are you, are you fully moved in yet? What's happening? Well, we got a long way to go. No, we're we're still based in in San Diego right now in our our Prox facility and currently working on a facility up in in Orange County that 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 won't be done until uh, closer to July and August. So so we're as far as football operations are concerned, we've been uh, business as usual here. Um, but on the uh, logistical side, we've had to do some work as far as getting a facility ready, getting a field ready, and then also working through training camp options for us. This August, so there's, there's a lot of work to do in the transition period. Which means, based on the logistics, you're, you're still interacting with a, a lot of San Diego fans in San Diego, which it's got to be tough. I mean, are you able to tell? I know it's a small venue. Uh, what is it? The StubHub? What, what StubHub? Yeah. Okay, yeah. StubHub, right? Yeah. Can you tell uh, yet, Tom? How many former San Diego season ticket holders have now moved over to LA? Is that uh, anything you, have, you guys have data on yet? You know, we may. I know I, I don't. Um, it's hard to tell right now. Um, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see. We, we hope, uh, you know, we, we've got the, a lot of the same players that are moving up to, uh, to Los Angeles. So we'll see how that goes. We know it's a difficult situation for everybody, you know, especially for San Diego fans and, and what, what they've had to go through. But, you know, our plan is to put a, put a great team on the field, a great product on the field that people want to come and watch. And, you know, it's certainly going to be, be a unique venue up at the StubHub Center. It's not something that I know I've never seen before, and we really won't know what it's like till we get there, to be honest with you. Um, I've never seen a game in the stub pub. I've not seen a soccer game there before. I've been there for some all-star football game practices, but uh, it's going to be a different environment, a unique environment, but something uh, um, we'll, we'll see how it works out. Talking to Tom Telesco, Chargers, L.A. Chargers GM with us here on Tiki and Tierney, hey, CBS Sports Radio. Tom, you talk about the fans and what their adjustment is going to be like. How disruptive do you expect this to be for the players? I mean, this is, this is kind of major. Yeah, you know, again, it's it's hard to tell. It's something none of us have gone through before. Um, you know, it could do one of two things. It could break you apart. It could pull you together. Yeah. And, and I saw this this past year what was a unique year for us, too, with the uncertainty. And even though the one loss column doesn't show it, but I saw our team come together during the season. And that's what we're going to have to do, you know, as we move in transition up north. I mean, it's just something that as a football team, you kind of you rally around certain things. And we're going to have to build this together up there. We understand – we're moving into a market that, that, that we're going to have to build our fan base literally one by one. And, uh, you know, for a football team, you know, you kind of band together on that, that sort of thing. Yeah, you know, you talk about the uh, conversations that I'm sure you've had to have, especially with the veterans, uh, Philip Rivers and et cetera. What, what, is, what have they said about this move? Are they excited about it? You know, the, the guys I've talked to, they, they want to play football. Look, nobody really wants to move. We, we all know that, but we all know that there's a great opportunity for us in Los Angeles as well. We know the situation that, that was here. Players want to play football, and players want to win, and uh, we've got a lot of guys like that. We have a lot of veterans other than Philip Rivers that, that are excited about moving up there and playing football. You know, it's going to be brand new for all of us. It, it's really starting from scratch. Yeah. Um, and, and when you come off a, a four-win year and a five-win year, I think starting from scratch may be pretty good. So we've got a lot of work to do, obviously, with the football team and the transition, but it's something we're excited about getting ready to do. To Tom, do. Uh, Tom I, can't, I can't imagine I'm splitting an atom here when I, when I say this to you because this has to be, you know, centrally on your mind almost day to day in terms of, you know, you keep building the roster. And, and I know you guys were banged up a lot, a lot of injuries. I certainly get that last year. But like the Giants with Eli Manning and a few other quarterbacks in that mid-30 threshold, I believe that Phillip's going to be 36 next, uh, next season, late in December. So you have to find a way to structure the roster that is ready to theoretically compete for a championship now while Phillip Rivers could still play. I mean, that's pressure. I mean, how, how, do you, how, much, how do you process that? How much do you even think about that? What is the, what is the, the, the I guess, the compass to, to navigate what could be a tricky uh, – dynamic sure, with that sure well i think more pressure would be if you didn't have a quarterback right now so uh the good thing is we have philip right now he's still playing at a high level i think he still has a number of years left in him but look yeah as, as a general manager as a, as a football organization you're, you're always looking who that next play, who that next quarterback will be um when our scouts are out on the road in the fall you know, they're scouting all the quarterbacks like we don't have one at that point. Uh, we have to do that work we've done that every year since i've been here because you never know when that player may come along and uh, we've got a situation here where we know we have Phillip. We know we can win with Phillip. 
Um, but you're always looking in the horizon. And it really isn't just a quarterback. It's, it's at, a, at every position as you go through. You know, your offseason plan is certainly with the draft because with the draft, you're not necessarily just drafting for players that are going to play for you in 2017. You have to look beyond that of, of players, that ha- how you're going to build your roster in 2018, 19, and 20. So, you know, sometimes people see the draft as, all right, who's going to come in and fit into your roster immediately, and that's not always the case. Yeah, no, talking to Tom Telesco, Chargers GM with us here on Tiki and Tierney, CBS Sports Radio. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago, I believe it was Mike's first season, Mike McCoy, and uh, I think I'm pretty sure it was. You guys actually won up in Cincinnati, the wild card game, and Woodhead, my my, my guy from the event, you know, eventually, of course, the Jets, my Jets decide not to hang on to Danny Woodhead because he's actually good. Somehow they let him go. But I remember he scored a touchdown. You guys beat a good Bengals, a great Bengals defense, and a team that hadn't lost in Cincinnati all year. And I'm, si- or, and I'm sitting there saying, man, here they come. The Bolts are, are poised to get, you know, incrementally better every year and, and make this run for the championship. Didn't happen for a multitude of reasons. McCoy's gone. Anthony Lynn is in. What makes Anthony Lynn special? Why did you hire him? Yeah, it's funny. You go back to that that four years ago. We went 9-7, and seven, won a road playoff game in Cincinnati, and then the second year went 9-7 and seven and, 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 you know, we're a game from going to the playoffs at 10-6. and six. And then the last two years have been, have been rough, um, obviously. But uh, bringing Anthony in here, um, you know, he brings a lot of things to the table for us. Um, obviously, he has a vision and plan for us on all three sides of the ball. But I think the biggest thing for us is he brings that era, that, that aura of leadership. Um, when you sit down and talk with him, he, he, he can inspire people. And uh, he comes off as very genuine. Um, he's tough with the players. He'll be tough with the players, but I think he'll be fair. Um, but he, he's someone that when we talk, the more we talk to him, and I've said this a couple of times, you know, if, if I was playing, if I was playing, I would want to play for him. Um, he, he, he just has those leadership qualities that I think are really going to connect with the players. And, and um, you know, we think we put a good staff together around him. And, uh, you know, we can't wait, to, can't wait to get back on the field, at least for OTAs, to get the players back on the field and, and get this thing going again. You know, did you guys take into consideration a narrative that existed around playing in L.A. that you have to have that – celebrity, you know, I put it in quotes, celebrity coach, or you, obviously you have it when quarterback because Phillip Rivers is a star perennially. Uh, but did you, ever, did you take that into account at all? No, I, you know, winning sells, and that's, that's the big thing. you, you got to win. Um, names don't win. So, um, now when we were in the, the head coaching search, we didn't really, uh, uh, you know, as far as it didn't have to be an offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator or, or a special teams coordinator, it, you know, it could have been any of the three. It could have been a college head coach. Um, you know, we were just looking for the right person for this job at the right time, and, and we just felt Anthony uh, was the best fit for us right now. Good. Now, now this is off, off of the uh, football field and onto the, I guess, the roads of Los Angeles. You're running the Skechers Performance Marathon. Now, you're cheating a little bit because you're doing a 13-person relay. I've done a few couple of marathons. What are you guys, why are you guys doing this? What's this all about? Tiki, I'm cheating a lot. I mean, it's, 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 it's 20, what are you running, like 100 yards? Race. You running I've 100 done, yards? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done some 5Ks and half marathons. I've never done a full marathon. Uh, now, this is it's a, uh, it's a 13 people relay, and, and um, it's just something fun for, for the Chargers organization. It's going to be a kind of a mix of some Charger employees, a couple of Charger players, uh, even some Charger cheerleaders, and some Charger fans. Nice. And uh, you know, it, it, it's just, like I said, something fun to do on a Sunday morning. And, and I, I like to run and, and – you know, obviously, it's, it's a new hometown for, for all of us, and it's, you know, actually, it's a great way to kind of get a feel for the neighborhood. So I know I think the starting line is at Dodger Stadium, and I think my, my leg of the relay kind of works its way through, through Chinatown. So it'll be, be fun to see the different neighborhoods. I wish I could run the whole 26. I've never done that before, maybe at some point. Um, but uh, no, it would be something fun to do on, a, on an early Tom, Sunday morning. Tom, I'm going to get your number from uh, Samter. you got to come out and run New York. I run the New York Marathon every year. I'm actually going over to Jerusalem today to run the <laughs> Jerusalem Marathon. So if you're going to do one to start, do New York, man. I got the hookup for you. I got to work my way up to that. I don't know if I can train enough to get ready for 26. I know <laughs> yeah, you I, I can. A, you can do it. I, if my wife did it, you could do it. I promise you. <laughs> I've, I've run a couple half marathons, and when I finished them, I, I thought to myself, there's no way I could stop, turn around, and do this all over again. So. <laughs> That's a good point. And by the way, you lost me when you said this, this is fun to wake up and do this on a Sunday. Not my book at <laughs> eight, Tommy, but good luck to you, pal. Stretch those hamstrings, right? Oh, my fun. You know what's fun for me on a Sunday? Waking up with a little, little hangover. The kids are relatively quiet and my wife and I order a little greasy food and we ease into the day.